Welcome to MacBook Lessons number four, a lesson a day made easy for you on Facebook. Today we're going to talk about the general settings for your MacBook and some of the color settings that we can change and system like viewing settings that we can change. And we're going to do that under the Apple in System Preferences. The first button is called General, so we'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice the first button is Appearance. Appearance actually talks about like the colors you see. You'll notice this is gray right here as I move across. If I change that to blue, that will actually change this to a blue color. So it kind of, you know, it's a, a preference that you may have that you, you like the color instead of the gray. It also changes the buttons up here. So you'll notice these are red, yellow, and usually green. If I turn it to graphite, they're actually grayed out. And the reason that is because you may have someone in your family that's colorblind. Maybe that will help you help remind you not to tell them to click on the red X to shut the window or I don't know or or maybe that helps them to see different shades and they can decipher between the the buttons but that's what appearance is and how you can change it. You'll know highlight color. You'll notice when I type a word if I actually highlight it it's purple. We're going to go back in here. I can change it to be gold. So this is actually just your highlighter color and you can choose the color that's right for you. The sidebar icon right there is actually talking about your finder window. If you click on the finder window it's kind of like my desktop, I mean my documents, sorry, my computer, blah. I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Um, move that back over there. So if you're used to the my computer icon this is actually what the finder is. So these icons over here are actually set to be large, but I can change them to be medium or even small. And that's a nice way to, you know, customize it for you for what's best for your viewing. Down here is the show scroll bars. You guys notice if I use two finger scroll, I get the scroll bar on the right hand side over here. But when I let go, it disappears. Notice that? So if I'm right over the top of it, it'll actually stay there. And if I click on it, it'll actually jump to the next page. So that's what these two settings are. I can actually always have the scroll bar on if that's something that bothers you or you just need the scroll bar there for viewing. Or I can have it automatically based on mouse tracking or when scrolling. And this one again, you can have it jump to the next page or jump to the spot that's clicked. I actually prefer jump to the spot that's clicked because usually you can tell exactly where you're needing to go. So the next part is ask to keep changes when closing documents. When you close a document in the MacBook, it actually saves while you go. So you don't actually have to save on a normal basis like you do on other computers. You do have to save the original time. You do have to name the file and it will make a, an image of that file. And then as you go, it continues to update that um, that file. However, you can have it automatically asked to save it when you close the document. What that does is it actually saves a newer version of that document. So you'll have multiple versions. So maybe when you close it, you want it to ask to save so you'll have a newer version of it. So every time you close that window, you'll have a new version to decipher how much process you've made over time. And you can actually go back to all the different versions and see the process you've made. So that's basically what that button is right there. The next button is close windows when quitting an application. So if I actually come in here and I uh, quit Finder, which you can't do, but if I quit Finder, which is usually at the bottom, it would close the window as well. And I can show you that in Keynote real quick. We'll choose that. And when the window opens up, if I quit Keynote, it will close a window when quitting the application. Now, if because it's saving while it goes, it's that's not going to have any effect on your project if you accidentally quit Keynote. It's actually going to have saved the last version that you had. So the next thing is the recent items. If I come up here under the Apple, recent items is right here. It actually is saving the last 10 things I opened under applications, documents, and servers. It's a quick way to get back to something that you are using recently. And the bottom two, I 
really don't find that important, so we're going to skip over that. And I'm going to go ahead and close the window, and thank you guys for joining us today, and I look forward to teaching you more tomorrow.